Get a small team together of people, like-minded people, who are passionate about your film. You write from your heart and passion and instinct first and foremost. You're gonna tap into some universal stuff. Don't show guns. Comedy tells the truth, and specifically it tells the truth about people. There's a lot of talented people that never make it because they don't understand the business. But we need to hear that, that pat, you know, um, shaking hands. We need to hear, you know, the, the, the flesh touching flesh and the grip, you know, same thing with kisses, all these sorts of things. If it's not in your production audio, take a moment, put something there. Rick Veers joins us and he's going to give us some tips on the importance of capturing room tone and natural sound in your films. Rick has written the books, the Location Sound Bible and the Sound Effects Bible. Thanks for joining me, Rick. Well, thanks for having me back. Um, I'm always telling people to make some noise, uh, but I thought it'd be kind of funny today if we talk about not making noise and doing things to uh, stop noise from happening, um, especially when you're recording dialogue. Um, the key, as we talked last time for dialogue, is to make sure that everything is clean and consistent and that you can intelligibly hear uh, everything uh, that is being said. I'm currently uh, in post-production on a film uh, that we shot this summer that's going to be released uh, this holiday. And it's kind of funny because I was going through it. I'm cleaning up all the dialogue. And I found patches where we didn't have room tone. The, the sound guy that was working on the project, we, for whatever reason, couldn't find it. We didn't have a time. Whatever happened, we just ended up with no room tone. So I found myself going through previous takes, looking for pauses of silence where we could actually hear the sound of the room or the location. And sometimes it was only three to four or five seconds, and sometimes that's all I needed. And I would go in and I would steal those little tiny pieces, and I would put it underneath the dialogue of the cuts I was making so that everything sounded nice and smooth. And it was kind of funny because if you think about it, I had really clean audio, but then I had to go back and actually add noise underneath it so that it's consistent. So the, the catch when you're recording dialogue is when you're on location, your goal is to reduce all of the background sound as much as possible. Um, unless you're in a vacuum, it's not going to happen. There's always going to be something happening, some low-end rumble, way distant traffic, some AC hump, something going on. And so that's why we tell people, always record room tone. Usually about 30 seconds is good. Some guys will give you 60 seconds. 30 seconds is usually good enough. And that gives the editor, uh, specifically the sound editor, um, you know, the pieces that he needs to glue the dialogue back together. Um, so now, room tone doesn't necessarily have to be interior. We also uh, do what we call nat sound. So if we're at a park, uh, or on the side of the road or whatever, it's great to have 30, 60 second loop of uh, the background noise at that location. Um, sometimes you can't help background noise. If you're shooting on the side of the road uh, you, you know, and you don't have a permit to shut down traffic, especially if you're doing like a news piece or a YouTube video where you're just doing a stand up, you, you can't you know, shut down traffic if you don't have a permit. So what you wanna do is include the traffic in your shot. Because if we can see traffic in the background, our minds are going to automatically assume, well, we should be hearing cars, right? So think of it this way. I'm standing on the side of the road, and you guys as the audience are the camera looking at me. If the road that has all the traffic is behind you, so it's behind camera, off screen altogether, then it's going to look and sound, well, it's going to sound wonky. Because in the background, I might be, you know, there might be trees behind me. And then you hear all this traffic noise like I'm standing on the side of the road. So when you can't control the sound, one of the tricks is include the sound in your picture so it makes sense to the audience. This is especially true if you're not going to do ADR. If you're just doing a stand-up for a news piece or something on the side of the road, let's see traffic. That way we understand why we're hearing cars uh, zipping by. Other things that you can do uh, to help uh, eliminate noise, not just background noise, but just noise in general, the props, the actors themselves, um, if we can't see their feet, and they're on tile, and there's clickety-clockety of their footsteps, if we can't see the, the, the feet, have them take their shoes off. Have them walk in, the, in their socks. Uh, or maybe put a sound blanket down or a fernie pad or you know, whatever you call it. Uh, put those down so they can walk on that. Um, I've done scenes where people were arguing in the middle of the, of the scene, and one guy had to take a bottle, and while he was talking, he throws it in the trash can. Well, it's a glass bottle, so as he's saying his line, he drops it in the trash can, where well, you're going to hear a glass clink. And, you know, we'd rather have the 
ability to process his dialogue without the glass in there and then put in our own glass the way we want it to sound after the fact. So what was our solution? We put a blanket in the trash can so that when he threw the bottle in, it landed safely, softly, and more importantly, quietly on the blanket and you never heard it. So he was able to say his line of dialogue, pitch the bottle, the line was nice and clean and the editor could turn on and cut that line up. Does that make sense? It, it, it does. It does. And, and, uh, uh, how important is this Foley to add in later? Now you talked about the bottle, adding it in later. Uh, talk about how you can change the feel of the, by changing the sound of the bottle. Well, there's a couple of reasons why we'd want to change the sound of the bottle. Number one, um, you know, he's throwing it in the trash can. The trash can is easily the bottom of the trash can is going to be about six feet away from his mouth. That means the microphone that is probably two feet above his mouth is now eight feet away from the sound of the glass. So we're going to have the dialogue nice and present in the mic, and then we're going to hear this glass bottle somewhat more distant. Uh, so that's problem number one. Problem number two, obviously, is that the bottle could step on his line, and maybe he says something, um, you know, part of the consonant or whatever that really kind of identifies what the word is. But if you hear the glass at the same time, you're like, wait, wait hold on, what did he just say? So we don't want it stepping on his dialogue. Um, when you're replacing sound, you can kind of toy with the scene a little bit. How hard that glass bottle hits sells emotion. If it's just lightly tossed, you just want to hear a light clink. If he's pissed, if he's mad, you're going to want to hear it shatter maybe uh, or, or whatever. So there's a lot of other tricks that you can do when you're adding sound uh, in post. Um, a lot of people think, and, and let's talk, we were talking a little bit about this before we went live here. Um, Music, say there's a dance scene in a movie and you see dancing all the time in, in the movies. Should you play music in the background like while <laughs> you're filming? Well, you can't because uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't want to mic recordings of recordings. You want to go to the original recording and then just drop that in your timeline. You'll definitely obviously get a cleaner sound. But the other issue is if there's dialogue, okay, well, if there's dialogue, we, we, how are we going to separate the music from the dialogue? We want to add the music in post. We want everything to be nice and clean and isolated on the set so that when we get in post, we can tweak it and mix it the way we want. Uh, plus, you don't know, you know, you cut from shot to shot where the microphone is. The, even if you did miraculously um, record clean dialogue with the music in the background, as the camera moves and the microphone moves, well, the speakers, unless the speakers aren't moving, that sound's going to drift in and out, and it's going to, you know, it's going to get quieter. It's going to get louder, and you're going to hear phasing a little bit, depending on where it's at in the room. So, you know, in general, never, never, never uh, play music in the background. Now, if you're in a music video, who cares? You know what I mean? Um, then you can play music all day long. It certainly helps the band or the actors or whoever get into character because they've got a beat to dance to. Can you talk about adding sound effects to a film in post-production? Yeah, um... Well, there's a, that's a whole topic. Um, where, do I, where to start? Uh, you know, a lot of times you get stuff for free. So usually when I'm editing, um, I'll go through and find pieces in the audio that I, I know I can use. Sometimes I use it as a guide. Most of the time I replace it, but sometimes I keep it there because it's, it's quick, it's easy, or it just simply works. Um, uh, doing a scene uh, in one of the films that we're working on right now in which the character drops a bag of cocaine onto a, a desk. And so it was a, you know, the prop was like a plastic bag with flour in it. And he drops it. And it was one of those old school, like 1950s, 1960s, like metal desks. So when it hits, it's got this nice resonance. So he drops it on the uh, the desk. We pick it up uh, in the location sound, in the production audio. So I'm like, okay, well, I can use that. But it just, the bottom end of it sounded good. The impact, the resonation, uh, the re the resonation, I guess, of the uh, the resonance. There we go. The resonance of the desk was just perfect, but there was just not enough plastic crinkle sound. So what I did was I kept the the production audio of the drop because I like that part. But then I accentuated it by adding. Um, we actually had sound effects in our library of Ziploc bags dropping on the ground or dropping on a table, and so I layered that over top of the production audio. And it, it works really well. It really sounds like a beefy bag of cocaine dropping, uh, you know, uh, on the desk. Um, there are certain sounds that you, if you're tight on budget and time and you can't afford to do Foley, there's stuff you can get away with and stuff you can't. Um, doors closing, 
if we see a door close, we got to hear that door close. If it's not picking up in the production audio or the guy, the actor was closing it lightly because he was talking at the same time, actors, or excuse me, the audience needs to hear that door close. It immediately pulls you out of the film and it, it immediately tells you, oh yeah, this is a movie. Oh yeah, that's right. This isn't real. We want to keep the illusion that the story that the audience is involved in is real. And anything, anytime we miss uh, sound cues like that, that kind of like, you know, allows the audience to see behind the curtain and we don't want them to see behind the curtain. We want them to stay in the audience, uh, you know, in the seats and kind of watch the story unfold. Um, so certain things, obviously gunshots, all that kind of stuff, the heart effects, you got to have that kind of stuff. Um, there are things you can get away with if you, you know, if you don't have time or budget for footsteps, so be it. But footsteps add just so much character and presence uh, to the story. So, you know, if you can afford the time and the budget, um, I would definitely go in and put as much Foley as you can. Somebody hugs somebody. Okay, you're probably not going to hear that on the mic, but we need to hear that, that pat, you know, um, shaking hands. We need to hear... You know, the, the, the flesh touching flesh and the grip, you know, same thing with kisses, all these sorts of things. If it's not in your production audio, take a moment, put something there. Even if you just got to use a, a handheld recorder and just, you know, do it real quick and then just drop it in the timeline. At least you have something. You'd be surprised uh, what sells and what works. All right, Rick. Thank you. And before we go, how can people get a hold of you if they have any questions? Uh, you can reach me at, uh, at my website, rickveers.com, R-I-C-V-I-E-R-S.com. Uh, Thank you so much, Rick. Cool.